Hello, my name is Magnus Peterson, and this is a short demonstration of the kind of performance improvement you can get with TensorFlow when you use a GPU instead of a CPU. I will use tutorial number 15 for this demonstration. And the way I have set it up is that I have two Anaconda environments, one for TensorFlow with GPU support and one for TensorFlow with CPU support. And I should tell you that I spent at least four days setting up Linux on this new computer with a fast GPU. And my experience was that it is easiest if you just install the normal version of Ubuntu with the Unity desktop. I tried to install Linux Mint because I like the Cinnamon desktop better. I also tried to install that on Ubuntu. I tried other window managers. I tried a lot of things. And in the end, my conclusion was that the standard Ubuntu works the best. And when you install another window manager or something else, it is so easy to break Ubuntu. So you have to reinstall. I think I have to reinstall like 10 times. And Linux Mint didn't even have the driver for my Wi-Fi card. So that was a hassle to set up as well. Another thing is that I recommend that you install Jupyter Notebook in both of these Conda environments. Otherwise, you might not be able to switch between the environments in the notebook here. Okay, so let's get started. I encourage you to watch the tutorial number 15 on style transfer, so I won't go through it all again. But the idea is that we input a content image and a style image, and then we want to produce a mixed image, which has the contours or the lines or the shapes of the content image, and it has the colors and the texture of the style image. And when I executed 60 iterations of this algorithm on my old computer, which was a quad core Intel 2 gigahertz CPU with hyper threading, so it was a quite fast computer, but this took three minutes and four seconds. So now let's try and rerun it using the GPU. I won't show you how to install this because there are many resources on the internet on how to install the GPU version of TensorFlow. So I will just assume that you have already done that. And then we switch to the Conda environment where I installed the GPU version of TensorFlow and we restart and run all. And it should just work if everything has been installed correctly. Sometimes I have found that if you work on a notebook or a project for a long time and it maybe doesn't shut down the resources because of a bug or an error or whatever, then you might have to restart your computer. But in general, it just works. So you can switch between the GPU version of TensorFlow and the CPU version and the same code should work. And performing 60 iterations of this style transfer algorithm now only took 12.4 seconds to execute. And this varies a bit. Sometimes it's 11 and sometimes it's 12. So this is really fast. And what this means is that we can now execute a lot more iterations a lot faster. And this allows us to experiment a lot more with the settings. Previously, if I wanted to execute 1000 iterations of the style transfer algorithm, that would take me maybe 45 minutes on my old computer. Now it takes a few minutes. So let's try it. And while this is running, I can show you over here. So the GPU I have in this computer is a GTX 1070 from NVIDIA. And the utilization of the GPU varies a bit, but it reaches something like 95%. So the reason that it doesn't use 100% of the GPU is that in this main optimization loop, it is really only this function call here, session.run, that is running on the GPU. Then we take the value of the gradient and update the mixed image, and then we repeat. If all of this had been programmed in TensorFlow, so all of it could run on the GPU, then we should probably get closer to 100% utilization of the GPU. In some of the notebooks for the tutorials I have done, the GPU GPU utilization is only like 50 or 60 percent. And the explanation is again that a significant part of that code is running in Python on the CPU using NumPy, for example. And another explanation might be if we are feeding a lot of images, then we need something called a queue runner to more efficiently feed the images to the TensorFlow graph during the training. So it doesn't have to wait while we are loading the new image in Python and so on. It just loads a bunch of images and puts them in a queue and does this in parallel with the training. And this is especially a problem if your network is smaller. The network we're using in this tutorial is, is very large. So most of the computation is spent on the neural network. So this is a very fast GPU and it is already done with a thousand iterations, which would have taken me 45 minutes on my old computer using the quad core CPU. And if we scroll down to the bottom here, we see that it took 
1 minute and 51 seconds to perform 1000 iterations. And when your turnaround time for an experiment is this short, it means that you are a lot more productive with your research because you can test out an idea very quickly. There's another thing I want to mention and that has to do with the RAM on the GPU. I bought the GTX 1070 model because it has 8 gigabytes of RAM and I believe the 1060 model which is quite a bit cheaper has 6 gigabytes of RAM and I wasn't quite sure how much I needed. Now it looks like that TensorFlow uses all of it but there are actually two modes of memory allocation in TensorFlow. By default it will allocate as much as it can on the GPU and this is to minimize the fragmentation of the memory and make it run faster and so on. And this is normally not a problem because you're not using the GPU for anything else while you're doing these experiments. You can also make it only allocate the RAM that it needs and then it will increase it as it goes. But this might hurt the performance because it, it will cause greater fragmentation of the memory. I couldn't really find out how much memory you really need typically for doing deep learning stuff. But one way that we can maybe assess it is that we switch to the CPU version and we run it all again. And we see that Python uses less than two gigabytes. This might increase a bit. So maybe you are all right with a six gigabyte or maybe even a four gigabyte GPU. And those are quite a bit cheaper than the one I got here. So if we go back again and look at when it's running at a CPU, it is just really slow. One of these dots is one iteration. And by now it would have been done if it had run on the GPU and it hasn't even gotten to 30 iterations on the CPU. So let's try and interrupt it, kill it, switch back to the GPU, run it again. And here we go, super fast. This is incredible. So if you have been wanting to buy a new fast gamer PC, but maybe your wife says that you are not allowed to spend that kind of money, now you have a very good excuse for doing it anyway. And you still get to game on it in the evenings because you might as well use it for that as well. Now you spend so much money on it. You see, already at 400, 50 iterations after just maybe a minute. It is super fast. And if we go back, GPU utilization almost 100%. And I can hear the fans. I don't think you can hear this in the video. They are not loud. This machine that I've got here doesn't really get very hot. So once again, less than two minute computation time and it's done. Thousand iterations in the style transfer algorithm. 45 minutes on my old CPU. So I've considered whether I should give a review of this specific laptop that I got. And I guess I can give a few words about it. It is this MSI GT62VR6RE Dominator Pro. And it looks like this. You can see the exhaust for the cooling fans here on the back and it works very well. The machine is not hot at all and the fans are not loud. Overall, I think it is a laptop computer that is very well made. And this new generation of NVIDIA GPUs like the 1070 that I've got here is just as fast as a GPU you would put in a desktop computer. And this weighs less than three kilograms. And then you need the power supply as well, which is quite large. I do have two problems with this computer. One of them is that if you type on the keyboard in Windows 10, then once in a while, I don't know, maybe once a day or sometimes a few times a day, I don't quite know what the system is, but once in a while, it doesn't register that you're releasing a key. So for example, let's say you would write hello and you would release the O, but it doesn't register it. So it writes like this. And that's a bit annoying. And I really hope they fix it. I don't know if it's a problem with the Windows driver or maybe with Windows 10 itself. I haven't had this problem with any other computer, including the old one that I ran on Windows 10 as well. So I don't know what it is. The second problem I have is that I apparently bought the wrong kind of RAM to upgrade the machine. And you might be able to get it work, but you need to manually set the clocking speeds and all that in the BIOS. But it's a locked feature in the standard BIOS, so you have to flash it again. And I'm still waiting for support to answer exactly what I should set and if the RAM will work or not and so on. So support is not super fast and I'm still not sure I'm going to find solutions to these problems. So it is a nice PC, but I have a few problems with it. So there you have it. This is the kind of performance increase that you're going to see using a fast consumer GPU. And if you're interested, this GPU will also run all the newest games on the highest settings.